Hello, hello. Thank you very much for the invitation. I travel a lot, but I have to say that this is amazing, an amazing place. Thank you. So um, today I'm going to talk about trichoscopy, hmm? but tomorrow I have a workshop on this topic as well. So uh, today I would like to focus on trichoscopy of common inflammatory hair disorders. Hmm? We will try to make them easy. Hmm? Um, so, I, I would like to start with a definition. What's an inflammatory hair disorder? It's a, a disorder that shows clinical evidence of inflammation. So, erythema, scaling, pustules, crusting. Okay? So, we have two groups. Hmm? Uh, we have non scarring disorders, allopathic or not, and scarring disorders. Hmm? These are, this is the, the main classification. Okay? But what about this patient? Huh? Is this a, a scaring alopecia or not? Actually, I cannot see any scars here, actually. So uh, I would think about a non-scarring alopecia. But actually, here we have this uh, peripheral scaling. So this was indeed lichen plano pilaris. So this is a scaring uh, alopecia. But now we don't see any scar, okay? Because this classification, scarring versus non-scarring, uh, you know, has a limitation. Because in early phases, even in scarring alopecia, we do not see scars. Okay? So, uh, because, you know, this is important because we, we want to diagnose these hair disorders in early stages because we do not want to arrive at this point. Huh? I don't think these patients are very happy. Huh? So, uh, I don't like that classification. I, I did this new classification. Huh? I don't know if you uh, are happy with it, but uh, I think that it would be better to classify the disorders in this way. Disorders with diffuse okay, inflammation, okay? so non perifollicular and disorders with perifollicular inflammation. So, I will focus on this group, because the other group will be addressed tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, I think that in most cases, diagnosis uh, of these disorders is easy. Hmm? I think that you agree that this is a, a psoriasis and this is a tinea, a carrion. Hmm? But not in all cases. Huh? To me, all of these cases uh, may look like psoriasis, but uh, I think that uh, none of them is psoriasis. Then we will come back to these patients later. So, uh, what do we have to evaluate when we talk about uh, hair disorders, hair inflammatory disorders? We have to evaluate these four parameters. First of all, scaling. So, the color and the distribution of the scales. Then, vessels, morphology and distribution. Hair shaft changes and then other specific clues. So, uh, let's see the clues of these conditions. Psoriasis. What do we have in psoriasis? We mainly have uh, scaling, white diffuse scaling, okay? We may also see vessels. It's not easy, you know, to appreciate vessels because, you know, epidermis on the scalp is very thick. But if we use some oil, we can appreciate them. And they are uh, dotted vessels distributed in a uniform pattern, okay? As you can see here. So, uh, in dark skin patients, actually, vessels are not easy to be appreciated. So, we have to rely on scaling pattern. So, white diffuse scaling. Seborrheic dermatitis. Hmm? In this condition, we mainly have uh, yellow scales because we also have spongiosis. Hmm? And then we also have vessels. We have these linear branching vessels. So the vascular pattern is completely different compared to psoriasis. Then, tinea capitis. Tinea capitis is very, you know, the dermoscopy of tinea capitis is very clear cut. We mainly have uh, hair shaft changes, okay? Uh, we have bent, you know, hairs, mainly uh, coarse cue-like hairs and coma-like hairs, okay? But also, you know, this type of bent hair, okay? We also have another finding, which is quite characteristic, which is this one, Morse code 
like hair hmm? with these white bands. Hmm? This is quite specific. And then discal lupus, okay? This is, of course, scarring, but in early stages is not, you know, that does not show scars. So the main findings here are follicular features, okay? Mainly follicular plaques due to the presence of follicular hyperkeratosis. We also uh, have this pattern, red follicular dots, but this is not so common. So the main clue is the presence of follicular plaques. Remember this, okay? We also have, you know, scaling and white bright areas due to fibrosis. So this is uh, a summary, okay? Psoriasis, we have to remember the uniform dotted vessels and diffuse white scales. Seborrheic dermatitis, yellow scales and linear branching vessels. Tinea capitis, bent hairs, especially corkscrew like hairs and comma like hairs. Morse code like hairs and discoid lupus follicular plaques. Okay, so re let's remember these findings. Hmm? So now let's try. Okay, here. Uh, three options, and also another one, other condition. What, what do you think about this? What? Yeah, we have plugs. So, this lupus. Hmm? Okay, it's clear cut here. We have follicular plugs. We do not see follicular plugs in psoriasis or seborrheic dermatitis. Okay, perfect. So, this is this lupus, correct. So, another case. Hmm? What do we have here? We have white scales. Hmm? We also have some, you know, dotted vessels. Psoriasis, perfect. Okay, psoriasis. And here, do we have follicular plugs? No. Do we have dotted vessels? No. We have this uh, particular scaling. Huh? So what do you think? I put other condition. So, when there is other condition, it's likely that it is likely it, it is other condition. So, actually, this is another condition. Uh, this is uh, pityriasis samiantasha. Okay. In this condition, we have this pattern of scaling, asbestos-like scaling. So, thick scaling enveloping a tuft of hair. Hmm? This is quite characteristic for pityriasis samiantasha. Okay which is just an inflammatory condition. It's not an infection, of course. Perfect. And what about this? Huh? Psoriasis, tinea capitis, seborrheic dermatitis, or other condition? Huh? Other condition? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yellow, but you know, l let's see the scaling pattern. We have this, you know, uh, thick scaling enveloping huh, the tuft of hair. So, it looks like pityriasis samiantasha, huh? but it's not pityriasis samiantasha. It's tinea capitis. Huh? It's a, a quite rare, but tinea capitis may present like pityriasis samiantasha. But let's see here. What do we have? This bent hair. Huh? This comma-like hair. So this is tinea capitis. So you can see the difference. In both these cases, we have this thick scaling enveloping a tuft of hair, but just on the left, we have this bent hair, okay? So this is the difference. So we have to focus very well on the patient. Okay, another case. Psoriasis, tinea capitis, disco lupus, other condition. What do we have here? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Disco, we, we have follicular plaques, so it, look like, it looks like disco lupus, but actually, this is Lacan simplex chronicus, okay? I don't want to confuse you, but uh, even in Lacan simplex chronicus, we may appreciate follicular plaques because we also have follicular hyperkeratosis, hmm? but there is a difference, the vascular pattern. Let's see the difference. In both these cases, we have follicular plaques, but in Lacan simplex chronicus, we have dotted vessels. Similar to psoriasis. Why? Because in Lycan simplex chronicus, on histology, we have a psoriasiform hyperplasia, okay, with the elongation of dermal papillae. So we see 
dotted vessels. In this curl lupus, we have linear curved vessels. So we have to focus on the vascular pattern. Of course, also clinical examination may help us because lichen simplex chronicus is quite itchy. But there is this difference on dermoscopy. So uh, the pattern of lichen simplex chronicus on the scalp is similar to the one we can appreciate uh, on the rest of the body. Okay, so follicular plaques and dotted vessels. You can see another case of lichen simplex chronicus. So follicular plaques and dotted vessels, and also we may appreciate broken hairs, okay? In this case here, uh, we appreciate mainly uh, broken hairs, and you know, some hairs uh, show this broom-like uh, pattern, okay? Because of the, uh, the scratching. Okay, another case. Tinea capitis, seborrheal matitis, psoriasis, another disorder. What do you think? We do not see yellow scales. We see white scales. Huh? We don't see dotted vessels or psoriasis. So it might look like psoriasis, but this is not psoriasis. This is dermatomyositis. Hmm? Uh, also, dermatomyositis uh, may show a, a psoriasis form uh, scaling uh, of, the, of the scalp. It's very similar to psoriasis on dermoscopy, but the background is a little bit different. Hmm? Uh, it's purple, you can appreciate the difference in uh, dermatomyositis is purple, in psoriasis is red. Hmm? We know that in dermatomyositis we have a, a, a purple uh, you know, shade of the erythema, and this is also true for the scalp. Okay, we may also appreciate in scalp dermatomyositis, these very tortuous vessels hmm? uh, that, you know, look like the vessels we can appreciate on, on the uh, uh, proximal uh, nail fold, periungal nail fold, okay? But this is visible at a, a higher magnification. Another case. So, uh, I... I yeah, I kept it simple. Psoriasis, discolupus, lichen simplex chronicus. What do we have here? Follicular plaques. So it's not psoriasis. Huh? Broken hairs, follicular plaques. This hair, uh, you know, uh, looks like uh, broom like hair. Hmm? So this is discolupus erythematosus, but we do not see the dotted vessels typical of lichen simplex chronicus. So if we do not see dotted vessels, uh, you know, it's more likely that this is disco lupus. Okay, another case, disco lupus, lichen simplex chronicus, other condition, we still have follicular plugs. Huh? So we do not see dotted vessels. So one might think about disco lupus. But actually, this is follicular mycosis fungalis, okay? So this is the third disorder that may show follicular plaques. But in this condition, we also have a dilated follicular ostia, okay? A dilated follicular openings. Okay, you can see the difference with disco lupus. In both these cases, we have follicular plaques, but only in follicular mycosis fungalis follicular openings are dilated, okay? Why? Why? It's simple because, you know, in mycosis fungalis, we have a lymphomatous infiltrate that, you know, destroys the follicle, so the follicular opening, uh, you know, dilates, okay? Becomes dilated, okay? This is another study we did with the International Dermoscopy Society. So the main finding of follicular mycosis fungalis were follicular plaques and dilated follicular openings, okay? So, I, I would like to uh, conclude by showing you this case. W what do you think about this case? This patient, you know, uh, had a lot of pustules on the scalp, huh? scales. Wh what? Follicular mosinosis, okay. But there are a lot of pustules. Yeah, pastures were th the main finding. So this, any other idea? Neutrophilum pastulosis of the scalp, yeah? I agree. 
might be neutrophilic bacillosis of the scalp. This patient was treated for this condition with steroids, not by me. Tell me, tell me. What? Tinea capitis also, okay, okay, might be. But this patient was treated uh, for a diagnosis of neutrophilic uh, bacillosis of the scalp with steroids. So, you know, pustules increased, increased, but the patient, uh, you know, uh, didn't get well. But let's see dermoscopy. Hmm? Uh, we have a lot of pustules. We do not see any clue of tinea capitis, so bent hairs. Hmm? But we see a particular vascular pattern. These polygonal vessels, huh? these blurry polygonal vessels, uh, let's think about the face. Huh? When we have polygonal vessels on the face, the diagnosis is only one. Rosacea. Right, correct. And this is rosacea. Rosacea of the scalp. Huh? It's not so rare. It's quite common, actually. But, you know, the dermoscopic pattern is the same as the pattern of the facial counterpart. So we can do uh, a diagnosis very quickly. Uh, it's not atrophy because uh, the patient stopped the steroid cream uh, several months uh, earlier. So this is rosacea and uh, I gave the patient doxycycline for one month and a miracle. Huh? Everything disappeared. The patient was very happy. So, uh, of course, dermoscopy doesn't replace uh, clinical examination, but, you know, it may uh, help us uh, towards the correct diagnosis. So, uh, this is the summary I showed you before. We have to upload it, update it, sorry. So, uh, psoriasis uh, is typified by uniform dotted vessels, seborrheic dermatitis, yellow scales and linear branching vessels, hmm? tinea capitis, bent hairs, especially coarse screw like hairs, coma-like hairs, and, uh, and then also Morse code-like hairs. Pt. rhesus amiantacea, asbestos-like scaling without, of course, any evidence of tinea capitis. Scalp rosacea, polygonal vessels. Dermatomyositis is typified by a purple background. And then we have the three conditions with follicular plugs. Hmm? We have disco lupus, which is also characterized by linear curved vessels. Lacan simplex chronicus, which is also characterized by dotted vessels, and then follicular mycosis fungoris, but also follicular mucinosis, which is typified also by follicular openings dilation. Okay, so uh, we just have to keep in mind this, you know, uh, summary. Okay, so uh, this is the end of the presentation. This is, these are the references, if you want. Thank you very much.